welcome back. Today we're going to read Luke 46 through 56. And what I love about this is in my Bible, it says the song of Mary. And Mary says, you know, this is when she's with Elizabeth after Elizabeth gave her the greeting and the John the Baptist leaped in her womb. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God of my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his handmaiden, or maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Mm -hmm. And for he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. And he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. And he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He has spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained about three months with Elizabeth and returned to her house. Don't you just love that song of Mary? If you would just go and pick out all these little details and parts, it's beautiful. And I can hear even worship songs that were written. Um, the one that says, he has done great things for me. It was like, as I was reading the scripture, I was hearing that song, which is just such a beautiful thing because, you know, Mary declares this out. I don't think she actually was singing it, but maybe she was. But you could write a song out of this. If you're ever looking for words for a song, you guys, the most powerful words you can use um, and, and put into worship is God's word. It is so powerful. But I just love that Mary is just so rejoicing in the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I used to still try. It's always been a hard concept for me. But just recently, the Lord reminded me, Vanessa, it's me that's the joy. You focusing on me, who I am, my character, that brings a joy. It's not just looking for a feeling. If you're thinking, you know, it's thinking about Christ. And the more we do think about Christ and we more we do think about Jesus and what he's done and God and his amazing work that he's done in our lives and our, in creation and all the way through, um, it does bring a joy because the Holy Spirit wells up inside because it's truth and it's beautiful. And so if you're ever lacking that joy, just start thinking about Jesus because it's the joy of the Lord. It's him. It's him that we do um, need to think about. And um, and it's it's interesting because today is uh, we do the nine ladies dancing of the 12 days of Christmas song. And it's the nine fruits of the spirit. And I love this because the Holy Spirit lives in us. If you are you are a born again Christian and you have asked the Lord to come into your life, you can look up a. Galatians 5, and it talks about that the Holy Spirit, um, what the fruits are of the Holy Spirit. And I'm trying to get there. And um, I usually have to read my glasses with this Bible, but I'm doing good today, which I'm thankful. <laughs> and it says, um, Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. So people will say, love, that is the fruit. And then, I mean, that is the main thing. And then from there comes these attributes, joy peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And I just love that because when we're operating in the love of Christ, this is what's to be flowing from our life. Now we do wrestle against our flesh. Trust me. <laughs> You would think, okay, you've been walking with the Lord all your life. You know, you should be so good at this, you know. And it's like, wow, our flesh is still there. And it says, those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envy of each other. So, again, if you are walking in the Spirit, you will not be fulfilling the lust of your flesh. So, 
that's just an encourage me in to me is to get in the word of God and get full of the Lord through the day. I mean, the Holy Spirit's in us, but just really getting our mindset. And maybe you need to stop in the afternoon and then evening, like David, morning, noon, and night, I do. Um, and, you know, just certain seasons are harder than others. But here in that 12 days of Christmas is the nine ladies dancing is for the fruits of the spirit. You know, and you can go down on that list and say, you know, um, where am I lacking? And ask the Lord, help me with these attributes, you know, because the spirit is in me. What is causing me not to be overflowing? And if you look at Mary, she was just magnifying the Lord. And I want to go back to this. Continue to magnify the Lord in your life. Continue to put him first. Continue to be seeking him first with your mind and your thoughts and stuff. And continue to just look at who he is and get to know your God. Um, for he has, he is mighty, and he's done great things. And holy is his name. He is awesome. And the more we spend time thinking about him, the more the joy wells up within us, you know, to worship and spend time with the Lord. If you're struggling um, with that, get worship music on, start praising the Lord and just do it as a sacrifice of praise. There are times where I'm like, I don't want to pick up my guitar and sing. I don't want to. And then it's like, oh, my flesh doesn't want to. That's because my spirit needs it. <laughs> and so I tell myself, go. And I, when I do... And when I start worship being, it changes. It just changes us. So anyway, Merry Christmas, you guys. I hope you're enjoying this. It's God's word. It's just a beautiful thing. And we'll continue on on the Christmas story. Merry Christmas.